What's up, y'all? This your girl, Lil Smoke, and I just skipped class with the progress report. The progress report. All right, what's going on? It's your girl, Lila Shepard. This is another episode of Skipping Class presented by the Progress Support. I got a little smoke in the building. Hey, How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I had a great time learning about you and just researching you. So kudos to you and all that you do. So I'm excited to, you know, get to tell your story. Most definitely. Let's go. Absolutely. So let the world know, what all do you do? Well... Let's first start off, I'm a veteran. I just got out last year and hey. I'm excited to be here. Okay. And I'm a parent. I just became a full-time parent last year. Wow. I um, got full custody of my sister. Um, and most of all, everybody been waiting on, I'm a five-time award-winning artist. Okay, well, we're going to get into all that good stuff. Um, you know, wow. So, you know, becoming a new full-time parent. Yeah. So you said to your sister? Yeah. Okay, so speak about that. Yeah, I got a little sister. I took full custody over. Um, that's one of the reasons I moved back home. Got I was you. in Cali. Yeah. Um, so, it's been a journey. <laughs> wow. So, you know, got my little sister. We've just been vibing it out, taking care of her, being a big parent, as you could say. Okay. Sister. How old is your sister? She's 10. She'll be mm. 11 next year. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to talk about why you have custody of her? Uh, we can. You know, it was, it just, it was, it was, it was necessary for me to have custody. You know, Understood. I'm in a better position. So that's one of the reasons I reached back and provided full custody for her. That's all right. That's yeah. all right. How, how has that been an adjustment for your lifestyle? Oh, it's different. It's different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, whew. I ain't gonna say it's easy, but it's it's been it's been life changing. It's a mm. blessing that I'm able to do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But it's hard. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's hard. I've been having to do schoolwork. <laughs> mm. Um that schoolwork different to when you get older. It's different. I don't even believe I was doing that. And I ain't right. even that old. <laughs> but it's just been different. It's been a learning experience. Mm. Um, it's been ups and downs, good and bad, tears and all. I'm sure. So. Well, salute to you again. That's yeah. that's huge. Thank you. A lot of responsibility, but yeah. somebody has to do it. So exactly. Respect. And I see that you're a Capricorn. I'm a Capricorn. Yeah, what it do? We just hella organized and shit. So you're gonna make it work. Right. You're gonna make it work. Um, so tell me about where are you from and talk about that hometown support for what do you do? All right. Well, I'm from Millbrook, Alabama. Um, it's on the outskirts of Montgomery. It's like 20 miles. Okay. But home, hometown support. Right now, since I'm been, I'm back on the scene. It's been, it's been growing rapidly. Um, like I told you, I've been in Cali for the last past five years. If mm. I didn't mention that, so my my fan base is in Cali Got and you. overseas, where I've been located, you know, numerous of times. So. Now hometown is I'm grasping their attention, gotcha. so it's growing. It's it's surprising me. I'm gonna be honest with you. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, something must be going right there because you got a couple of awards. I mean, yeah. you can go ahead and break it down, but you got a few from the hometown or, you know, surrounding parts, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, so talk about that. Um, shout out to the Alabama Music Awards. Well, I've been whew, crazy. This is my first time we're speaking on it. Five awards from the Alabama Music Awards. That's hard. I know, it's crazy. I'll still be blown away when I talk about it. But it comes for support. I've been um, doing music six years. Mm. So while I was in the military, I kept it going. I kept being consistent with it. And like I said, my fan base, you know, they they ride for me. So they was voting when I got nominated, you know, made sure. Like, this was my first year actually attending, but I didn't win this year. And I told them mm. it's okay. They was mad. I'm like, what do y'all mean? You know, I'm, I'm glad to be able to show my face this year. But um, Bama's female artist, I won that, I think, last year. Mm. Uh, it's a... It's crazy. My story crazy because every award I won, I was overseas. My cousin, he couldn't be here tonight. Shout out Tony Smoke. Um, he accepted all of them on my behalf. And it's crazy. I had to tell folks, you got to ask him to get their experience. But it's been mind blowing, you know, to look at those awards um, in my studio because I have a home studio where they sit at. It's just a reminder of keep going. 
keep so, going. Facts. Yeah. Um, I want you to talk about just doing time. You was in the Navy, right? Yeah, I was in the Navy. Talk about the decision to do that. How long were you away and just your experience? Ooh, I gave the Navy five good years. Wow. Um, right. Um, been away numerous times. Uh, it was hard. It's very mentally challenging. A lot of people, you know, if they ain't never experienced and that being away in a foreign country, you don't know anything about, still trying to do music. Like, I'm basically a workaholic. I work all home port and drop when I'm away. Like, for it to all make sense to stay relevant. Um, but it was hard. I felt like I was missing opportunities because I was over there serving our country. But mm. in a way, I wasn't because I was still around. I was still relevant. But people didn't know where I was. I was here. I was there. One minute I'm in Cali, next minute Japan, mm. next minute Philippines, next minute Micronesia. They was trying to, they used to call me a little ghost. Like, I but bet. my work ethic spoke for itself. Mm. Um, but shoot, it, I was just writing. That's that's how I did my time passing overseas, writing, okay. um, seeing how I could be different, tapping into their music, um, you know. I used it as a mental break for real. We want you to come skip class with us and share your story on our new segment called Skipping Class. Look, we want to talk to all the artists, indie or mainstream, or if you're an entrepreneur, come build your brand with us and tell your story to the world. You'll also get the show in our locker and you'll get promo clips for all your fans. So DM us today or visit our website, tprmediagroup.com. Get locked in with us. Now, talk about um, just how long have you been on your musical, your musical journey, <coughs> and when did you start to take music serious as a career? Um, six years on the music journey. Uh, oof. Wow. Six years on the music journey. Um, Three years, I've been taking it really serious, basically invested in myself. Mm. Got you. What does that look like to you, you know, or for you to take your career serious? What's some stuff that you got to do for that? Who is a grind? Um, you definitely had to be financially stable to do what I'm doing because mm -hmm. I do all this 100% independent. Um, shoot, the mindset. Yeah. Like faith in yourself. Most important, believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to, before anybody else, reach and Facts. invest their money. You got to. So talk about, you know, some of your musical influences and how would you describe the genre of music that you make? Um, my music influence is Missy Elliott. Okay. Missy is a legend. Big Missy, goat. A big goat. Um, I was actually living in California when they finally gave her a star. I, finally. What you say? I tried to make it down, mm. um, but I was dealing with military stuff, so unfortunately I couldn't make it. But I'm proud of her, man. It's a, it's a very inspirational person, different. What she brings, she brings different Come all on. the time. Facts. But that's what ties into my music. I get compared to people, you know, my age, who's made it instead of her. But mm. that's one, that's my main music influence. That's my number one icon. That's hard. Um, but what I bring different to the music is the style, realness, organic. That's me. So that's why I tell all my fans, I, I built my fan base actually off of being organic, being mm. me, not never perpetrating, not steering away from my direction. So that's okay. what I'm bringing. Respect. How did you get your name? The Smoke. Um, so I had, I grew up with brothers. Everybody okay. we everybody went to school was called Smoke. Nobody never knew our first names. Like my first name is funny. That's why I was like, whoa, that's you. Yeah, wait, wait, that's wait. Me. What's your name, if you don't mind? Melissa Smoke. Everybody know who Melissa Smoke is. It's crazy. They're like, man, your mm. name Melissa Smoke? It don't match you. I know. That's, that's what funny. gets you. <laughs> okay. Um, but all my brothers, they go by smoke, and I was the baby. I was one of the babies, so, mm. you know, I was the one who get the notes from the girls and be like, yeah, such and such. So they call me Lil Smoke. That's how I get my name. Okay. That's dope. What is, what's the significance of smoke? Uh, it's just a lifestyle, man. It runs through our veins. It's a very intense name that everybody say, man, that's a cool name I want to have. Yeah. But it's very family-oriented. Got you. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, let's talk about music now. Um, so talk about releasing two mixtapes in one year in 2018. Man, that was a crazy year. That was my first year off of deployment. Mm. And who the grind was real. That music, the first music on um, mixtape was actually recorded before I went in. I just revamped it with, you know, more music with the second mixtape. But I recorded me and my cousin. My cousin Thomas Smith was the first person who ever let me hear my voice to actually like, dang, I can actually do this. Like, this is me. So it was that mixtape, then another one. Like I was addicted after after he let me hear my voice and mix it. Like, okay, yeah, I could really do this. So dropping two mix back to back. Like I was full of music. I was full of life with mm. the music. Like I was addicted. <laughs> mm. That's hard. Yeah. And then so two years later, you released the project The Beginning. Yes, the beginning. The beginning was just the intro of what's becoming now. It was like 2020, I was actually disabled. I wasn't walking. I really? wouldn't know. Um, when um, COVID hit, I had an accident in the military. Um, that's why I'm kind of out today, because I'm medically retired. Damn. I missed up, like my left side. Nobody didn't know this. It's like, I don't know, I kept dropping music. People just thought I was here and there. Nah, like 2020, I was down. I was in therapy. Wow. <laughs> um, so the beginning, it was just a a build up to where I was going. Like I always had faith I'm gonna make it out of my situation to be here today. Wow. So the beginning was, shoot, the beginning, the beginning of the new little smoke, different vibes. How did that make you feel when you learned through the news, like of you being like, you know, is it, is it considered disabled in a sense? Yes. Okay. So how did, how did you take that news and how was it for you knowing that you was done being, you know, serving your time? Um, it was bittersweet. Uh, I always knew I had a purpose somewhere else, but I didn't know my purpose was going to end like that part. Mm -hmm. But it was bittersweet. I left some good people. That's why I um, probably met some of the most loyal people to me today mm -hmm. in the Navy. Um, you know, to watch them grow, go other and be further, rank them. You know, I'm proud of them, but sure, it's time for me to go be who I aspire to be. I feel that. So, okay. That's yeah, bittersweet. <laughs> yeah. So that leads me to the next, um, you know, song we're going to talk about, of course, that first day out joint. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was a dope record because, you know, I'm like, damn, did she go to jail? Did she do you yeah, know Yeah, that's what happened. I'm like, soon. oh, like she was in the Navy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's cool. So I liked how you put a twist on that. Yeah, yeah. So you talked a lot of inter about a lot of interesting things in there. Okay. Talking Let's about go. home ownership. Yeah. Um, sexuality. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you to break down that record. All right, first day out, homeowner. So I bought a house when I was 22. That's that hard. Was my first house. Like, mm. um, first that that track was just like I'm coming back. You know, I'm about to let these folks know what's really what's really how to how to do this. First day out, I wasn't talking about getting out of jail. Never been in jail. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> never been in none of that. But I was talking about getting out of the military because it's. Cause I was serving time. Oh, like, yeah. I broke, I broke that down like serving time. I did five years for the federal government. Mm -hmm. Shoot, I gave up my rights just for a sacrifice for my people. They don't even know that. So it's to me, it was my first day out, which it was. Um, I said I bought a house. This is before the Navy. I bought a house. I lived the whole pre-marriage life, crazy life thing early, like. Living up, like living old people as they say dreams early mm, in my life. Mm. So that's where the home ownership come from. Went off to the Navy, um, shoot, gas with some more stuff, owning deeds, had to reach back. You know, I'm overseas, but I gotta, I gotta, you know, tap into my folks, see what's going on with them. It's like, you're hearing bad news. Well, let me, let me get all the land in my name for nothing won't happen if I right. have something to come back to. So I own land couple acres um so what else what else you just asked me uh you mentioned sexuality on there as well ish, ish um I'm trying to think what I said I don't I don't record so much music okay you was, I think you said something about a girl or something <laughs> man like I said the Navy was a crazy life okay man. <laughs> okay the Navy was crazy man Shout out to my girl Q Matt. We had fun in the Navy. Okay. <laughs> That's about all that Respect. is. Respect. Yeah. Respect. Let's talk about the newest single, Know Me. Know Me. 
No Me was a track I held for two years until I got better because gotcha. I kind of knew what No Me was going to take me. Mm. Um, but back on 2020, um, it was just like a statement. Start acting like you know me. You don't know. You don't know what I'm going through. I got people hit me for money, hit me for this, hit me for that, but they don't ever ask you, how you doing? Mm -hmm. How you mental? Only a couple people will because they understand, they get it. They're not after you. That's how I know me came about. And when my producer, shout out OG Roller, sent that beat, I already knew what I was going to say. It was, it just, it took me like probably about 10 minutes to write this song. Yeah. Mm. So it was just a statement letting people know, start acting like you know me. Like, I'm, I'm sure everybody relates to it. Like, start oh, yeah. acting like you know me. You do not know. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Respect that. Um, how do you feel that you progress lately as a person? Wow. I feel, man, sometimes I had to look in the mirror and be like, wow, you done came a long way. I done progressed as becoming a, a basically to my people, they looking like all the stands are doing, becoming like a superstar already in the household to them. So I've become a great person lately. That's why I'm like, wow, I've become more humble because I ain't gonna lie, I was a hothead. Like, you <laughs> back in the day, you know who Smoke is mm. and what we did, played ball. You know, we was me and my girls, we was popping in school. So I had one of those type of lifestyle childhood. And to progress out of that troubling life to where I'm at now, you know, I know that was, I'm proud. I'm proud of myself, though. That's hard. So, what all do you have coming next? And can we expect any more music and visuals, of course? Of course. So, actually, I dropped this Friday, August oh, 5th. Okay. Um, it's called F Love. It's with two talented female artists. This is my first track with females. Like, I just nice. been working with the guys, but this is my first time putting a track with the females. It's called F Love. I got Mary Jane and Matt Black, and it's already. Mary Jane, a light-skinned girl? Oh, um, she got dreads, that green. Okay, yeah, I think, I, if that's the same one, that's the homie. Yeah. She did an interview with us, if that's the same one. Yeah, okay, that's cool. the same yeah, I one, that's the same Jane. one. She hit me when I, when I, when I book, when I post the flyer up. Got you, yeah, that's so my homegirl. shout girl. out Mary Jane. For sure, so she we, dope. Yeah, we about to flood the city. I got people already ready for that song, ready for to put that mm. song in movies and everything. That's why I had to kind of push the date up gotcha. with Know Me. So, uh, Elf Love, man, you better, Friday, I'm telling you, that's okay. one of those tracks. Like, this the year of the females, and that's definitely one of the tracks. That's dope that y'all, you know, putting stuff together. I, like, I love to hear that. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. So, is there anything else that you want your fans and listeners to know? Stay tuned. This is definitely a big year for me. And for y'all too, because this is, I wouldn't be here without y'all support. Mm. Uh, I've been seeing y'all going hard in them comments for me. Keep yeah, going. Yeah, definitely, man. they do. Keep going, man. I appreciate y'all. Y'all already know the other things. For sure. The Progress Report.